Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we are going to an adventure. We are going to photograph the night sky and today's target is the Great Orion Nebula. And the conditions to photograph the Orion Nebula today are not exactly the greatest because yes, we have finally a clear night in this winter, but we also have a almost full moon. The moon is going to be a full moon in like four days. So it's really close to the Orion Nebula on the night sky, which is going to interfere with our images quite a bit. The sky will probably be washed out, so we may need to work some magic in post-production. I of course have my usual uh, setup, which is the Canon EOS R and the 70 to 300. So, you know, we're gonna see what we can come up today. I have been waiting all winter for perfect conditions and I didn't get them. So at least we have a clear night and we're gonna see what can we produce even though the moon is so close. So you guys can see it for yourself. So let's hit the road and let's see what can we do in these conditions. All right, and we arrive at the location and look at that. Look how crazy bright it is due to the moon that we have right there. As I told you, the moon is almost the full moon, so it's pretty bright, even under a pretty dark night otherwise. And the Orion Nebula that we are going to shoot is somewhere right here in the middle. You can see those three stars in the line. This is the Orion Belt. And the Orion Nebula is somewhere in this area, so it's very easy to spot. So let's set up the Star Adventure, let's set up the camera, and let's see what we get on our test shots. All right, so everything is set up. My Star Adventure is polar aligned. I have my camera mounted on here. I also put on the uh, two times extender to turn the 70 to 300 into a 140 to 600 because for Orion 300 was not enough for a full frame. And also I mounted the lens hood on my lens because I figured that because the moon is so close, I don't wanna catch any excess light from the moon coming from the side of my lens. So. A lens hood is a good idea. It's not limiting any light that normally hits your lens even at night. So you can totally use a lens hood at night. And I think this is a good idea, especially if you have the moon in the sky around. Okay, and the settings that I have settled for is ISO 1000 f 5.6 of an aperture, which in turn is actually like if 11 with the extender and then 30 seconds of uh, shutter speed. And I think this is a pretty good combination. We're gonna take a couple of images. One thing that I did mistakenly, and this is something to remember by to learn from my mistakes, is that I forgot to turn off image stabilization. And look what happens if you have image stabilization in the lens turned on in a setup like this. The stars look, look really, really weird. And it took me a couple of minutes to actually figure out what's wrong. And as soon as I turned off image stabilization, everything went back to normal. So yeah, let's take some images and we're gonna take a look at them in Lightroom later on to see what we got. All right, so as you can see, I am back in the studio and I have taken a closer look at those files to give you a proper idea of what you can expect doing night sky photography, doing deep sky outstar photography with the moon out in the sky. So first, let's take a look at the raw files inside Adobe Lightroom and then I will show you my final photo that I have processed in Photoshop so you can get the idea what kind of thing can you expect doing night photography in these conditions. So here we have those raw files and as you can see, it's uh, it's not very contrasty. If you look at the histogram, it's pretty much all condensed right here. So we definitely have some light pollution from the moon. And even at 600 millimeters, look how small the Orion is right here. I needed to crop it heavily in order to get a decent framing out of Orion. And looking at those raw images, you might've thought that it's 
basically nothing right here. But obviously after doing some stacking and after pushing and pulling the image in Photoshop, I have came up with an image that looks like uh, this, which has, you know, it has a decent amount of detail overall. I was kind of surprised that I was able to pull out that level of detail. As you can see, this is the Orion Nebula and of course the fainter parts of the nebula right here are pretty much lost due to the to the washing out of the sky because of the moonlight but the brighter parts right here and also this region right here is perfectly visible so as you can see the final image is not mind-blowing it's not you know i was just using a telephoto lens like this one with a, with a two times extender so it's definitely not you know an image that you can produce out of a proper telescope and i was having the moon really close to the royal nebula so honestly i'm kind of happy with what i've got and would I recommend going out and doing astrophotography, deep sky astrophotography with the moon pretty much close to the full moon out at night? If you're a seasoned astrophotographer, you probably can wait it out and wait for better conditions. But especially if you're a beginner, if you're just practicing, definitely it's worth to go out, take some shots, you know, practice with the equipment. And the results are, you know, they're pretty good. They're pretty decent for, for the conditions that I was shooting this at. And also if this is an object that only appears on a winter sky, like the Orion Nebula, you run the risk that if you miss a clear night, you might not even get another clear night because usually winters are just so, so cloudy. So if you get a clear day and the moon is out, you can definitely go have some fun, do some astrophotography, practice with your equipment, so yeah, I would recommend it. And right now, if you want to watch some more videos about astrophotography, how to use the Skywatcher Star Adventure, how to post-process your images, definitely check out one of these tutorials. You will probably find them useful. Also, consider subscribing to my channel because in 2021, I will be posting a lot more videos. I have a cool video plan where I'll be testing this Helios vintage lens for a Milky Way landscape shoot. So this should be pretty interesting. So hopefully see you in another video and bye-bye.